Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Tyler and today we're going to be installing wheel spacers on the E90 to get that aftermarket wheel look without the aftermarket wheel price. So today we have the Burger Motorsports wheel spacers themselves. And for the E90, I kind of already did my research. It is documented and it seems like the best fitment is going to be 12 millimeters for the front and 20 millimeters for the rear there. Now the reason I went with Burger Motorsports uh, wheel spacers themselves is because of the quality of the spacer itself. I didn't want to cheap out on something connecting me as a driver to the road. And so, as you can see here, it looks like a machine piece of aluminum with the hub centric fitting in the center as well for alignment. But what I did like about this kit was the completeness of it. And on top of giving spacers, they give you a set of lug studs for each spacer according to size. So these are extended according to the size of the spacer that you get. In this case, this kit right here is 20 millimeters. And what I like is it's a 10.9, so it's one of the strongest bolts that you can get. They didn't cheap out on their hardware, as well as this little guy here is a nice aluminum guide pin for when you're putting back on your wheel and you're getting everything all aligned, it'll keep everything straight. So let's go out to the car and check out what we're looking at. This seems to be the easiest and the most common method to finding out spacers for your car, but we're gonna take the straight edge here at the center line of the wheel and run it all the way up to the fender. And what we're gonna do is with our measuring tape is measure from the top of the tire here, just about the top, and we're gonna take a measurement. So for me about there, it's right at the first bold line, so that's about 10 millimeters. And then what we'll do is go from this inner edge to the outer edge of the fender, or just about. So that's about another two to five. So you have a little bit of play there, a little bit of room to kind of fine tune where you want the wheel to sit. Now I went with the 12, not as aggressive as the 15, because I did want to bring this out, but I didn't want to have any issues with the fender itself. And that seemed to be what worked the best within the E90 community. So we're going to start by breaking each lug bolt loose. So I have my 17 millimeter and I'll go ahead and just break these three. So we're going to go ahead and jack up the E90 here at the starting at the back rear and about here, about maybe a foot and a half from the rear, you're gonna see a little square space and a, and a jack point right here. Mine does not have the block, but you'll feel like a metal lip and there's a square there that you can jack up on. So we're gonna go ahead, jack up the vehicle, take off this rear wheel. We're gonna look at the surface, make sure everything's clean, and we'll go ahead and start installing the rear spacer. It's not terrible, but we're gonna go ahead and clean the actual flat surface here. That rests against the hub and rotor here as well. And we're gonna clean up this hub centric ring. Everything pretty much where the wheel is gonna to touch and mount to, we're gonna clean both of these surfaces up, make them as nice as possible so that there is no discrepancies between the spacer and the wheel and hub itself. So here I have a nice wire brush. I'm gonna go ahead and scrub all the way around and scrub this surface. And I'll probably take like a little bit of simple green in a brush and just brush everything down just to make sure that this is as smooth as possible. give you an idea of what we're looking for you can see that this is all nice and smooth I can feel with my gloves going around the top but then the other half you can see that we have the buildup on the edge there so we want to get rid of all that we want that to be as smooth as possible just like this so I'm gonna go ahead wrap this up and then we'll go ahead prep the inside of the wheel we'll do the same there for that surface and the inside 
as well. And we'll go ahead and get our spacer and get that prepped to go on the car. And so before we get the spacer installed on the hub here, we wanna go ahead and take the anises that was provided and just take a little bit because we wanna coat the edge right around this hub centric part to make it easy to remove the spacer when we do go to take the wheels off. If you ever need to do tires or service it in any way, we do not wanna get this on the actual threads of the lug studs or the face here as that may cause an improper mounting. So just a little bit on the edge of your finger and just make sure it's nice and even all the way around. So now we can take our spacer and we can slide this on. And now we'll take our guide pin, just snug it down, make sure all of your threaded holes are lined up. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the spacer here, just to prevent it from sticking on the inside of the wheel just to make sure everything comes on and off smoothly. Line up one of the holes. And that'll slide right on. And so here's the stock bolt and the Berger Motorsports bolt that was provided with the 20 mil spacer. Don't get these mixed up if you do have two different sizes of spacers. I'm just sending them all the way down as far as they can go. and then we'll go ahead and snug them up afterwards. So now we got three in, we can remove the guide pin, which I really like that this is provided. Makes it really easy to get everything lined up. And it's like, you pay for what you get, you know? High quality kit, spend a little bit more money, better quality in the end, right? So we're gonna go ahead and snug all these down, just like I put them in in that star pattern. Make sure everything's even. So we'll check this, there's no wobbling. That means everything's seated flat, sandwiched together. So for the e-chassis, Burger calls for 88 foot-pounds. We'll lock that in. And we're gonna do the star pattern again. <laughs> that looks so good. Uh, Oh man, I cannot wait to lower this car. All right, let's get the other three done and then I'll go ahead and we'll do a little review. So before we start the front wheel spacers, I have a prediction to make. I have this check control message here. Don't mind the SOS, that's for my aftermarket radio, but that is a service soon light. And so if we scroll down, we go a little bit deeper we're using the stock over here. I'm scrolling through with this and I'm selecting with the BC button. So we're gonna scroll down to service info. We're gonna press the BC and go into that menu. And here we have a light for the front brakes. We have a warning light, it is not red yet, but at the bottom here, it shows miles and dashes. So it can't predict when the front brakes need to be done. And it, I already went under the hood and checked the brake fluid and it was about full. It's within those tolerance lines. And because this can't be predicted, I'm thinking it's a bad sensor. And generally when we see that, uh, it's gonna be a sensor that's been pulled or torn off because that sensor is a two stage. And once it rubs through and makes that connection, it'll turn red when it's working properly. It's indicating that, hey, you need to get your brakes done but since it's yellow and we can't see that prediction there from the car i'm guessing that it's going to be a bad sensor maybe something got kicked up on the road and tore that sensor down but we're going to go ahead check it out while we're doing the front spacer and for those of you that are still getting acquainted with your e90 the brake fluid is going to be at the driver's side under this panel here there's going to be a clip you can just lift up on make sure this is tab is gone and then lift up there and there's your brake fluid reservoir. So as we can see that the fluid, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but it's just below the max line there. So no issues. As you can see, just wires hang, hanging here, just hanging out. So luckily what I predicted was right. Just make sure there's even good pad. It's good. Got a good pad in the front. And the back should be fine too, so we'll get that sensor replaced. But yeah, generally, like I said, if you see those dashes, 
it can't predict anything so the sensor is either broken like this probably because it wasn't cinched down enough and it was rubbing on the inside of the tire and just wore through but easy replacement we'll just pop it off here here come around follow it here and then there's a little casing in the back so we'll pop open the cover here and replace that sensor we have our new brake pad sensor i think i got this on the amazon i'll link it below but it was only like 8.99 it wasn't even that bad so a simple fix that you can diagnose yourself pretty cheap see that sensor there so that little nub on top is what gets rubbed through and that's what ends up setting off the signal and so for the front brakes this sensor is located in the front left and the rear brakes is going to be in the rear on the opposite side same thing there's going to be routing just like this and the sensor will clip into the brake pad itself so let me go ahead put this down and get this all buttoned up so even with the wheel off it is giving me a good time to kind of look and inspect everything and i knew my strut was going you can see this dark soaked area here that kind of has all this dirt built up on it the shock is leaking it's time for some new suspension so whether i'm going to get new struts and do lowering springs or coil overs i'm not entirely sure yet but it is time for some suspension on this car and it is partly why i'm turning this car into a project because it does need maintenance here and there and i thought why not make some fun out of it? So, we'll see what's in store. So I've been cruising for a little bit on the highway, getting up, just trying different speeds. And I wanna see if there's any vibration in the steering wheel, if I can feel anything through the car. I just wanna make sure that those spacers are seated correctly. And, you know, I did my due diligence in cleaning the surfaces. So, you know, I'm not having any problems just after the initial 50 miles of drive you know i'm gonna go back i'm gonna recheck the torque on the wheels just make sure that they're all nice and seated so this is the next day after i filmed everything doing some more driving with the car i did notice on the driver's side rear that i did get a little bit of scrubbing i could hear it from inside but that was only on really big dips and really big bumps so nothing really to worry about but then again i haven't had the car loaded with people yet so i'll probably have to get a roller in here and, and roll it just a little bit and these are the staggered styled 162s and i had this is the 20 mil on the back so just to note that so here we are guys so the rear of the car looks so good it's pushed out just enough and i didn't go with 25 just because I do carry people with this car, it is my daily, and that would require some rolling there. I just wanted to be sure that I wasn't gonna have any issues. And on the forums too, you know, 20 seemed to be the most common size for the rear. And the front as well, just brought it out just enough. I think my wheels turned a little bit, but I think you get a good idea of what we're looking at. So it still is tucked under there a little bit, but brought it out just enough to be even with the fender itself. And, you know, I will need new suspension. So like I am saying, if anyone has used anything that they recommend for this car, I'm not sure if I'm going to get struts and springs or if I'm just going to go with a full coilover system itself. But man, I am in love with the rear. The rear looks so good even with it not being dropped yet so i'm really excited to see where this goes who knows maybe i'll switch them out and i'll get 25s for the rear and 15s for the front i'm enjoying doing these videos and it's like i said as small as the channel is right now i'm getting so much positive feedback and i'm really enjoying doing this stuff so everybody please comment like subscribe oh i messed that one up like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time Welcome back to the channel everybody, my name is Tyler and today we're going to be installing some wheel spacers on the E90 so we can get the aftermarket look of the... Oh. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know how to work on cars. <laughs>